other teams have been told that there's mostly not a chance for them to be in this race and that double lift has made up his mind and so uh details are being ironed out to complete this deal uh but that is where it is headed uh team solo mid will re- bring back double lift reuniting him with biofrost and bjergsen uh who all won championships together in 2016 and 2017. So just to reset everybody, the uh, double lift has been traded from Team Liquid to TSM. We'll be joining TSM for the summer split. Of course, double lift uh, going back to TSM, having success there previously in his career. This opens up a lot of questions, Tyler. The first one being, what happens to Kabe with TSM? Where will he go? Will he stay on the bench? Will he ha- now have to find a new team if this is in, in fact made official? What do you think will happen there? I have no clue. I woke up to this news by, by Jacob. I mean, it was always something looming, right? Like TSM was always going to be the most, like the, the spot that had the most potential, right? I mean, his girlfriend is the president of the company. It's a it's an organization he knows well. Bjergsen and him have won championship after championship together. So really, it seemed like the, the, the best spot for him to go back if he was going to move from Team Liquid. But I do feel bad for Kaba because if this if we were in a global pandemic – Kabe could easily find a new team, right? He's a he's a he's a really good player, but he's now kind of stranded in North America during a global pandemic where a lot of teams don't have the money to really take on a big contract. So it's a really awkward situation for him. I, I'm sure if if uh if Double F does go to TSM and everything does go through and he does sign on. That they're, I'm sure they'll try to be like, hey, you can be, it'll be a 50 50 kind of deal and you'll both work out for the spot. It's just, I, I feel really bad for copying this situation. It's a really, really awkward situation in a global pandemic as, a, as an imported player who's in NA for the first time. So it's not even like he's really used to America yet. It's, it, it's really, just, it's really, I just feel really bad for Kabe. Um, Medic in the chat actually says maybe Misfits make sense or Schalke. Do you think that he goes back to Europe, Jacob? Kabe? I don't think he has a lot of a choice, to be honest. At this point, I mean, the, the nice upside here is that he already does have AP1A athletic visa. So in terms of finding another team in North America, the logistics of that are a lot easier to move a visa from one company to another rather than him trying to get one in the first place in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, If you saw yesterday, President Trump announced that he would be temporarily shutting down immigration into the U.S. because of the pandemic. So it's very unlikely that any player trying to look to make the move internationally into uh, the U.S. would even be granted a visa in the first place at this point. So he has that advantage going for him. If there is a team that would like to make a change, uh, he is now going to be available um and ready to move from one north american team to another but i europe makes the most sense but unfortunately because of the global pandemic the league of legends calendar has shortened the mid-season period is now approximately three weeks rather than about a month and a half gives teams a very short amount of time to make decisions um and make all the necessary moves to complete those decisions from the legal perspective and everything else so kabe is kind of stuck and i and i agree with tyler i feel bad for him more in this situation than anyone else Let's talk about the double lift team liquid relationship because certainly it was a roller coaster ride for team liquid this split. That's not talking out of school at all. Everyone saw it. It wasn't their best split. And double lift talked about it himself publicly motivation issues. Then he got sick. Then he saw a Shurn fire, uh, um, uh, sub, or then he saw uh, someone subbing in in his spot. And then all of a sudden, the motivation came back. And so I wonder, especially given Doublelift's history of what happens to teams that he leaves, what do you think, how do you look back on this, te- this last split? Do you think it was premature, too soon? Do you think that Doublelift's motivation will return in the summer, even if he was with Team Liquid? This exit seems flat in a way. You know what I mean? Especially when you look back at Doublelift's entire time with Team Liquid, Tyler. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we talked about this before when we were discussing when the first news kind of broke from Travis Gafford, who broke the news on his own YouTube channel a few days ago about how his contract goes up for a trade. It's a thing of doublest lasting legacy is going to be a vagabond, right? It's going to be this traveling swordsman going from town to town, winning championships and then kind of moving on. Maybe that can change if he sticks to TSM, if he stays at TSM for until he retires, Maybe he'll be remembered as a TSM player, but he has so much. He's won titles on CLG, Team Liquid, and TSM, and I think all three situations have ended poorly. 
I still think Double is one of the best players in North America. He is the greatest North American born player of all time in League of Legends. I want it to work out at TSM because I want a challenger for C9, right? We just saw C9 just make a fool of everyone in the playoffs. C9 embarrassed every single team they played against in the LCS playoffs. We need a rival for them, right? We need a team that can actually push C9 because if C9 isn't pushed in the summer, if there's a Worlds, hopefully, I don't believe there's going to be an MSI. I believe MSI will be canceled. But if there is a Worlds, C9 has a chance to go far, but they're not going to go as far as they could if there's no rival in NA they can push them to get better. But this, if, but like, Tyler, we were talking all split about how Team Liquid was going through so many issues, Brox's visa issues, motivation issues. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it have been better to – or not better, but like couldn't there have been at least one more split to test this out? Like why now? It just seems like such a hasty decision. Am I wrong in saying that? That all of a sudden, this is the way that Double Lift and Team Liquid part ways? I don't believe it was necessarily just their decision, though. I don't think that they kicked him out the door. I think that it was mutual here in the fact that they wanted to go a different direction, and uh, he wanted to, too. I don't think he was very motivated to compete on this Team Liquid team any longer, um, and I think he's very stone set on going to TSM, uh, and, and so that's what's trying to be worked out right now. Um, but Is that surprising yeah. to you? Like, I mean, after all that success for one split to be – the reason, uh, and we're going to get Tyler back in just a second here. Jacob, do you think that one split was enough for this sort of acrimonious parting of ways? I understand the whole relationship with TSM, et cetera. But when I look at it professionally, it was only one bad split after four straight championships with the team objectively on paper getting better and having all the challenges that they had in spring split, possibly to be able to work those out in summer split. Yeah, I think that overall right like i think that tyler said this in a previous discussion we had around this where uh tyler said this in a previous discussion we had around this where he said that he thought it happened after started after worlds and i certainly could see that too uh you know we know that double lift had talked about having motivational issues relative to the uh relative to the spring split and it not mattering or mattering to him anymore uh, because of the lack of championship points and it being sort of a time off, uh, especially if Travis's reporting is correct that MSI is canceled. What what was there to fight for anyway, unfortunately, because of the pandemic? Um, but yeah, so I think that I think that this looms a little bit longer than just this split. But I do think that there's a true motivation for Double Lift to go to TSM, and that's why we're here. Okay, so let's talk about Double Lift on TSM. First, my first thought is, and chat is saying this a lot, they're spamming, what are they going to uh, use that extra spot? Kabe leaving, now there's an extra import spot. Spot. Who will they use it on? Closers being thrown in there in the jungle position. But realistically, when you look at Double Lift and the roster that TSM currently has, Broken Blade, Bjergsen, etc., how do you think that double lift will fit there both as a player on the rift synergizing with the team, but also from a vibe and a communication and a personality perspective? I definitely think that he'll mesh very well with Bjergsen and Biofrost. He has a really good relationship with both of them. Even after you have to remember, by the way, his breakup uh, with TSM the first time around was not his fault. Like he did not want to leave this team. Him and Biofrost were kicked off of TSM and found out via a report, report from DK that uh, Mithy and Sven were coming into TSM instead. Obviously, at the time, Mithy and Sven were the bot lane for G2. Um, and that happened right after Worlds. He did double have said himself that he didn't really want to leave. He was pretty content. And while their Worlds performance wasn't great, they were they had just won a championship. So at this point, right, like it's for him. Uh, I think that he'll fit very well with Biofrost and Bjergsen. We actually saw them play right after the LCS was suspended in that short break of window. We saw them play in a tournament with Ob or that Obelie hosted, mm -hmm. uh, the original TSM from back then. Uh, Hanser, Svenskeren, uh, Bjergsen, Doublelift, and Biofrost all competed together in that amateur event. And so we know that these guys are on good terms with one another. The big question I have, I'm not worried about Broken Blade. Broken Blade is actually one of the most easygoing pros I have met in uh, most Agreed. most of the, the space dude will do what is asked of him he is the consummate professional of like tell me what i need to do and i'll do it right and and that's i don't think that will be the problem i am a little worried about dardock we've never seen dardock and uh we've never seen dardock and double lift like this together in a team environment like this i'm curious to see if those 
personalities will clash. A lot of people say that Dardock is a lot better about these things. We know he has a history in terms of the way that he behaves. Uh, and and Doublelift also is a very difficult player to work with sometimes. And I don't think that that he like flames them. It, it's it's very comparable almost to the like forgiven, uh, forgiven type mentality, right? Is like he just has a very high expectation of his teammates. Uh, double lift does and so i yeah. think that you got to manage that if you're the coach or if you're the management of tsm you have to make sure this environment is sort of buttoned together and actually i think that comes down a little bit to bjergsen and and being the buffer here right because bjergsen has a good relationship with double lift dardock has talked about respecting bjergsen a lot right because of the pedigree that bjergsen has over his career for being a good player so i want to see if that is the that's got to be the cohesion here right is that is that i think bjergsen's the glue that sticks this team together um, Bjergsen and Biofrost to a lesser extent, but Bjergsen is the veteran uh, as well. I think that that's very important. So uh, it comes down to him. Tyler is back with us. Uh, Tyler, chat was talking a lot about is are the moves done for TSM? Uh, will TSM make more moves now that uh, Kabe is objectively not on this roster, assuming Doublelift takes that position, which he certainly will if he's traded to this team? That opens up an import spot. A lot of people saying maybe Closer comes in, someone like that. When you look at TSM as a whole, looking at their roster, would you think that there were more moves coming other than Doublelift? Tyler is uh, muted microphone. We'll just wait a couple seconds for him to get back up there. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people saying closer. Of course, he does have a contract with Golden Guardians. Uh, he had a KDA of 2.5 in the regular season, uh, this split. But a lot of people were saying that closer did a great job. He was one of the uh, shining stars of Golden Guardians, especially that miracle three games that brought them to the postseason, even though it wasn't a fruitful postseason. Uh, Tyler still can't hear your microphone. You we'll work me? on that in a second. Now no, we got yeah. So no, Tyler, uh, TSM, are they yeah. done with the moves or is it just double lift? You think? Uh, first out, uh, first off, shout out to Spectrum, the best internet in the world. <laughs> and uh, secondly, uh, the moves are difficult because, yeah, in a goal pandemic, very hard to move team players, so you can't really import the the top. You can't go get a Tarzan from South Korea if you wanted to. And bring him over. Uh, closer would be a good get, especially if the Broken Blade closer relationship and how close those two are as friends. But I would stay with it. I would stay with Darduk. I would stay with Broken Blade. I would stay with Bjergsen. Because at the end, like, the team wasn't bad. They, their peaks were really good. Like, their peak was beating C9. They were a good team when everything kind of came together. And even though, I don't, I, you know, moving Kava out does suck. I mean, he was much. He was kind of given a uh, a short stick when it came to roles. Like they kind of just kind of stowed him away in the corner, kind of the entire game, just kind of hope for him to get to the late game to actually do something. So I would keep it the same. I would keep Dardock. I would keep Broken Blade. I would keep Yerkson, Bio, and Doublelift, and just roll through here. Because the thing is, Doublelift's contract is only for the split. He's a he's a free agent in the summer or in the off season. Assuming so, they don't sign a new new deal yes. with him, right? We, it depends on how this goes. If they transfer contract rights from one to another, or if he receives an extension, which we have seen. So we don't know yet because okay. that part is not sorted out. They're still figuring out the transfer from Team Liquid to TSM. That's the direction in which it's moving. That is where they're moving. It's the only team that they're having a conversation with at this point because they've shut down the others. Doublelift himself has shut down some of the others also. Um, so we don't know if he'll get an extension or not as a part of this move. That is to, to be determined. Talk to me in two weeks and we may know. Jacob, let me, let me interject there. Do you think that it'll be a short-term play just for the summer split, or do you foresee a long-term contract happening here? I think if you're double, if you go for the extension here, I, I think that that was the play no matter what, is that he was going to renegotiate a contract with any team he ended up on. I think okay. that there were certain teams that pitched him on uh pitched him on making a really big contract for him we're talking like i think there were a few teams as i understood that were willing to make hooney level money available for him which uh i think he will take less than that by going to tsm which shows again how set he is on tsm being his future home so uh i think that there will be an extension that comes through of some form new contract done for him um as a part of this move rather than just being on the liquid contract that he already has and that those contract rights being transferred one-to-one. -one. 
Jacob, can you remind me, is it uh, for the uh, equity deal that Bjergsen has, is it three years on the same team or three years yes. in the LCS? It's three years consecutively on the same team. Okay. And, do and double lift. There are a few people who are eligible for that that are still in the LCS. Actually, Sneaky does have part ownership of C9 because now he's retired and he's a streamer. Uh, he was one of the people that would have been eligible had he continued to play on C9. Uh, Stixa is also eligible for that on CLG, although I don't believe he's gotten said deal. And and uh, Double Lift actually was was this year at the end of this year would have been eligible for that. It would have been the completion of his third year with uh, with Team Liquid. And now we see him moving, so he is not eligible for any type of equity uh, as it pertains to TSM. So just quickly on that point there, because double lift would have been eligible, and equity is definitely something lucrative that players should be thinking about. Are you surprised that this happened? Even on double lift side, like thinking to have ownership equity and team liquid if 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 you waited it out another six months to renegotiate another contract. That's something we were talking about on the free agency show that, you know, after it's almost a foregone conclusion that double lift is going to, is going to play another year. It's going to be a great year. And all of a sudden he's going to be talking equity at the end of it. And now here we are, he's traded to another team. I, I would say that's not too surprising. Cause I think double this whole thing is that he likes to be on the move. He's a player who likes to have a new challenge in his life every kind of year or so he, if you wanted to make money, he would just stream, right? He would be one of the biggest streamers on Twitch. He he did that for a season on Team Liquid when when he, between when he took his sabbatical from TSM and Turtle took over, and he went on his streaming sabbatical for you know three weeks, and then he came back because he wanted to play. He wants to compete. If he was thinking about just money, he would stay on Team Liquid. He'd get the equity, and he would retire as a Team Liquid player, regardless mm -hmm. of the results. But Double's goal is always to win worlds. It's his goal. It's his. It's it's what keeps him up at night. It's what keeps him playing. And whatever move he thinks is going to get him closer to actually reaching that goal, he's going to take it, no matter what obstacle in his way. And right now, obviously, from what Jacob's saying, is that TSM is his goal, and he believes that if he goes to TSM, it will be his best chance to compete internationally, especially with a C9 team that looks incredibly scary right now, who just destroyed the entire LCS playoff. So. He believes that TSM, the current TSM roster, will give him a better chance to compete versus that C9 team and internationally than the current TL team. Okay, let's go. Let's take this in steps then. TSM summer split, competing particularly against C9. You got Broken Blade, you got Dardock, Bjergsen, Double Lift, Biofrost. Jacob, does that team compete against C9? Depends on how you define compete. <laughs> I think that they will be better than they are now. I don't want to put all the blame on Cobb AC. I do think that Dardock, particularly in the playoffs, looked a little lost at certain points in time. Um, Broken Blade, I would say, was the most consistent performer throughout this split uh, after a lot of people criticized him in the offseason, saying that TSM should move him. Um, and, and I think they made the right decision by not doing so. Um, certainly it changes the way they play, though. Kabe is not as aggressive as uh, AD Carry in terms of play style as Double Lift. Double Lift is known for his aggression. Um, yeah, it, he's, it's known, he is known for his aggression uh, very much so. And I think that that will add to their play style in a way that they are not now. They've actually been playing the biggest thing I want to understand from a gameplay perspective here is they've been playing a lot around broken blade because broken blade has been sort of playing these some of these carry top laners throughout the year they've been putting a ton of jungle pressure up there for him too with dardock will that shift will the jungle pressure go the other way to double lift who we know in terms of playing with other junglers like Smithy and other loves to call for the bot lane pressure to get an advantage for himself will that shift the play style of tsm and will Broken Blade, I, I think personally he will be, but will Broken Blade be able to adapt to a different play style than what he has been playing the past three and a half months? Yeah, I agree. I feel if uh, if in this, in this new relationship of Broken Blade and Double If, one of them has to take the short stick, right? One of them has to be like, I am okay playing the weak side to you. And I feel like with TSM bringing on Double If, it will have to be Broken Blade, especially when, Double lift on TSM playing around double lift has won them what they won them three titles with him. They had a dynasty with double lift, arguably the greatest NA team of all time, peak wise in terms of talent, was that TSM team with double lift and Bjergsen. So if you're Broken Blade, who's been to one final, had disappointing end to this season, I feel like you have to be like, okay, 
Double's coming in. I have to take the short stick here. I have to play the weak side. I have to play around the bottom lane here. And if he does that, and if TSM can, you know, create a configuration where everyone is on the same page, I feel like this can work. Hal 90,000 we... 90, said TSM won't even make Worlds this year. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of people in chat, Tyler, that are not confident at all that even this move will improve TSM's chances of going on the international stage. No one might make Worlds this year. That's the thing. No oh, one. Okay. No, assuming there is a world yeah. in some assuming, capacity. Assuming there's a world in some capacity, I would say right now the only team I would ink into going to Worlds is C9. Everyone else in, in NA needs a lot of work, and I think we've seen that throughout the season that every team outside of C9 have glaring weaknesses. Even C9 have weaknesses against – if C9 was in Europe or South Korea, they would get punished for those weaknesses. Not saying C9 would not be a good team in any other region. They would. I still feel like they'd be top three in Europe or South Korea, probably top four or five in China, that they need someone to actually push them. So all I want from this TSM team is to be good enough to push C9 on a consistent level. We saw the peak of TSM for that one game versus C9 where they actually beat C9. I want to see that for an entire season because – NA with only one good team means we have no good teams. So you need to have at least two good teams pushing each other, getting better every day for the, the region to actually, you know, flourish. We saw in, in Taiwan for years, Flash Wolves destroy Taiwan every season. It was like a 25-3 record, 24-4 record. They destroyed Taiwan, the LMS, every single season. What happened to Flash Wolves when they went to the international stage? They bombed a lot of the time they made maybe quarterfinals they would upset a team or two but they were never a true contender for na to have a true contender at worlds we need at least more than one good team and tsm hopefully can be that team team liquid a very uh jumbled mess at the moment oh probably tactical taking over the starting duty job i just need another team be it tsm FlyQuest, eg someone to push c9 so we can actually get we can actually compete at Worlds. So let's dive into that, Jacob. Tactical starting at AD carry for Team Liquid moving forward, or do you think they look elsewhere? I think they'll take the next few weeks to evaluate, but if I had to be a betting man, I would say tactical is the safe bet, right? Like they, we reported that that's likely where they're going to end up in the end, um, but they have time. They'll, they'll see, right? Like they could do a various, they could do various different things here to make this work uh, for them in AD carry. They could go pull from another team. They could try to make a move around to get Kabe, although I think it's unlikely given that their import slots are already full up with Broxa and Core JJ. Um, that would require them to move one of them is what I'm saying, and I don't know how likely that would be. Um, I don't know, even with a plug-and-play AD carry, how much better Team Liquid gets. I don't think they get considerably better right now, especially because I think there are other issues that exist outside of double lift not being motivated. Uh, but as of right now, if I had to, if I had to make an educated bet, it would be uh, tactical will be the AD carry of mm. team liquid come summer. So for those just joining us, double lift has, uh, according to Jacob Wolf, double lift will be joining TSM for the summer split reuniting with TSM had played there previously. Uh, as we've talking about just to catch up on some bullet points, uh, tactical is the most likely choice to start in place of double lift leaving that void to start he had been playing he had played a couple games for team liquid this split as we had seen and also uh, for Kabe uh, we don't know exactly what that will mean maybe he goes back to Europe maybe he finds another team whatever uh, that Whatever whatever will come out of that, we will definitely continue to cover that here at ESPN.com slash esports. What other AD carries are there? I mean, tactical. Sneaky. Sneaky. Do you think Sneaky makes a return? Do you think this is the chance? Uh, I think is the, the contract he would want to come back to go to come go away from a lucrative stream, streaming career would be too much currently in the global pandemic. I think obviously there was rumors, and I, Jacob talked more about this, that he was you know in talks to go to Dignitas. And his contract was apparently too large. So they had to other way around that. So he was oh. in talks to go to dig and they came to terms for the first time. Yeah. And then sneaky came back to dig and said that he wanted more money. And th at that point, Dig said no. So that's, that's why he did not end up on Dick Toss in this off season. Okay. Um, would would he being... have to give up? Would he have to give up his equity in C9? If you moved to, yes, he team? would. Yes, he would. Which you have to think about whole, that. Ha adds a whole nother layer here in a world where people don't 
like to people don't like to spend money, so buying out someone of company equity is not realistic either. I think Sneaky's an unrealistic option, an option nonetheless, but a very unrealistic one overall. Um, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. I feel I feel like the the more easier options, although I don't think they're like marginally better than tactical. Go try to make a move for Apollo or Alltech, whichever one Immortals doesn't want, right? Mm-hmm. Like, or Immortals doesn't want to start. Um, could look elsewhere around the league. But I, I do think tactical, like from a skill perspective, is about the same as those guys. So I like if you're gonna do it, just go ahead and invest in your young guy. When we look at l- last question before we go out here, and by the way, for those watching, uh, we are in day two of our ESPN esports Valorant Invitational. Uh, that's what we were all preparing for. Yeah. Uh, full disclosure before this bombshell dropped. So we had to do an emergency live stream. So shout out to Jacob and Tyler (laughs) for coming in here and also Thomas behind the scenes for making this happen so that we can get some analysis out there for you. Uh, When we look back on this double lift going to TSM, is this going to be a better overall result for TSM or for team liquid Tyler? What do you think? TSM every every place double has gone the place he's left has always gone worse and the place he's gone to has always gone better in the in the short term so I know people are going to be doubting this move people are going to say uh, you know wash up players Bjergsen and double if but uh, some I mean double if won four titles in a row coming into this year I am not going to bet against double if he was in the MSI final last year in North America where there's not any good teams except one uh, the the competition the competition is not too stiff in North America, so it's not like they have to climb a mountain to be the second best team in the league. So I'm sure. just gonna I'm gonna go with TSM being the second best team going into summer split with Bjergsen. I think that the momentum and the the excitement around Bjergsen doublelift returning, Biofrost doublelift. I feel like they're gonna take the momentum and kind of just become the second best team. Hopefully, I want C9 to be pushed. If not the entire league's going to be a dumpster fire and C9 is just going to probably ATNO and we're probably going to have a very, uh, un, un, it's a not very fun world's trip. Jacob. Yeah, I, I agree. Like I think a lot of people will be instantly critical of this as we see in our chat and on Twitter so far. Um, but I, I do think that they're going to be a better team because of this. I, I just want to reiterate, I just kind of feel bad for Kabe because he took yeah. a risk here. Yeah. He he actually didn't yeah. listen to as many offers as he probably could have in Europe. He he was very he was very set on TSM by the by the time we got to the night end of the night free agency open. They were very set on him also. Um and I think he would have had more options if he would have listened to him, but he didn't. And uh now he here he is uh about six months later without a job, which uh feels pretty bad uh for him. And and also considering the circumstance of the coronavirus pandemic, it makes it even harder to get another one. So double lift joining TSM for the summer split. This is, of course, a developing story. What happens with Team Liquid at the AD carry position? What happens with Kabe, et cetera? We will be following along at ESPN.com slash esports. Of course, this news was broken by Jacob Wolf, another Wolf bomb over on that website as well. Uh, in about an hour at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, we will begin day two of our ESPN esports Valorant Invitational. Team Rift competed yesterday, including <laughs> double lift. So I guess the yeah, last time we saw yeah. double lift, as a member of Team Liquid was our Valorant tournament. So and he got benched. That. And he got benched in the second game when Rivington came in. That's right. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter at ESPN underscore esports. Follow us here and also youtube.com slash ESPN esports. We'll see you next for our Valorant Invitational.